Welcome back. For the next 24 hours, I'm going to be surviving no food, no shelter. We're going fishing, exploring a huge rainforest, and spending the night in the rainforest with no shelter. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Hey guys, welcome back to Gone Wild Australia. Today, I'm doing a solo 24-hour mission. Now, you're probably looking at the title like, where is Bo? So, Bo actually, unfortunately, got coronavirus. Uh, so, he's literally in bed for a week. So, I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to come out here and do a solo 24-hour mission. Now, guys, I've got a few essential items I need for this challenge. So, first item being a beach rod. So make sure you put a bit of love down in the comments for Bo because he's literally in bed, like, absolutely done. If you're one of those people that's watching right now that has come back for every single video comment down below and just let me know and i'll be replying to every single comment another essential items is just a little bit of tackle sunscreen of course bait air guard for tonight guys keep in mind i've got no tent i'm literally going to be sleeping out with no shelter and of course water so it literally gets freezing here at night so i brought a sleeping bag as well guys last video we didn't get too many comments so let's try and get over 50 60 comments this video guys i'm not sure if i mentioned but i'm actually on the Great Ocean Road. 24 hour survival mission, let's go. Step one, wake up early, gonna rise with the sun. Step two, get some good, some food in you. Step three, you grow hard about what you wanna be. Step four, f everybody just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Look at this location guys, I'm so keen. Look how blue that water is. I'm not gonna lie guys, the swell is uh, it's pretty full on. So the plan is, I'm gonna try and fish in this area for like two to three hours. So around this area guys, you can actually catch uh, pretty decent salmon, I've read online. As you guys know, I'm pretty new to fishing, so most places we go to, I do a little bit of research, so it seems like salmon around this area is the most common to fish. Because I've only got the sleeping get bag, guys. I'm not sure whether I can literally just camp on the rocks in a sleeping bag. Because I'm not actually sure how far up this tide pushes. So I'm going to set up the beach rod. And fingers crossed we can catch something tonight for dinner. It's a massive thanks to Nathan uh, that was in the last episode. He actually gave us this beach rod. I'll pop up Nathan's Instagram right now. He's helped us like you wouldn't believe. So what I'm running is just uh, a few sinkers and two pretty large hooks. Just make sure when you're rock fishing, uh, just be really, really careful because um, yeah, one wave can just sweep you away. And I've not that I've got much experience, but I've heard some pretty bad stories. So yeah, just be aware. I've been casting for about an hour. Just this, these waves are just absolutely smashing me um, and it's getting pretty dangerous. So I'm gonna move location just up the coast a little bit, but because the wind's pushing towards me as well, um, just the bait and sinker just slowly comes in or I get snagged straight away. So I'm gonna punch up there. It's just so rough at the moment, guys. So fingers crossed we can catch something. Found this little fella. Fuck, straight away. So I just put on this bait and pretty much got a bite straight away. So I'm just gonna change up my bait. So my sinker fell off in the last one. So I've put another one on and I've got two types of bait. So fingers crossed. Come on. I was taking my bait. So that is a good sign. So we're close, come on. They're biting. All right guys, so I don't know if this has been picking up on camera at all. Pretty much as soon as I put the bait in, it's getting a bite straight away. Um, I just can't actually stick the fish. So I've got, I feel like the hooks are small enough, but I might have to go smaller. So I'll give it a few more flicks. We got about an hour and a half of sunlight left. So guys, I've been fishing for like five hours. So I definitely need something to eat.
All right guys, so you're probably wondering, it's a bit of a different terrain here. So this is about two kilometers up the road. Guys, I was literally fishing for like five hours straight. I don't know if the hooks were too big, but literally I reckon I got probably about 20 or 30 bites over the five hours and literally not one fish stuck. So guys, I've actually punched up about two kilometers up the coast to this rainforest. And apparently guys up here, there's a massive, massive waterfall where I think I'm going to sleep for the night. I was originally gonna sleep next to the ocean, but I thought a bit more coverage here. So I've got my sleeping bag. I've actually left my rod back in a bush back there just because it's a massive beach rod and I don't want to have to carry it four kilometers. So it's a four kilometer apparently through bush. So I'm on my way now. Guys, if I get lost out here, I'm done. So it's four kilometers through rainforest. Um, I've got to sort of follow a GPS. So hopefully I'll be able to find it, hear the waterfall. Hopefully I can make some sort of a shelter out of a rock on a waterfall or something. So yeah, sun's about to go down guys in about 20 minutes. So I've got four, so I've got four kilometers to do in 20 minutes. I do not want to be going through bush when it's dark. So let's go. Guys, look at this tree behind me. That is huge. Imagine that falling on you. All right guys, bit of history. So in the early 1900s, this whole rainforest was full of trees, obviously, and they used to chop them down as materials. But basically what happened, because of the rough terrain here, it's literally like up and down, up and down. They found it really, really hard to transport the big logs that they were chopping down. So basically what they did, guys, is built a railway track to transport all the wood. And guys, I've actually heard, if I'm lucky enough, you can actually still see some of the railway from literally back in the early 1900s. So I'm going to walk along, keep a good eye out, and hopefully we can see some of the railway track. That would be absolutely sick. Guys, we're going to beat sunset. So I think I underestimated how far this is. It's quite a hike. Oh my God. Oh, sweat got probably half a litre of water left so so guys adding to what I was saying before um, in the early 1900s when the tree loggers would come through here they were also worried about the risk of bushfires so guys what they actually did was create bunkers throughout the rainforest so in case there was a bushfire they'd be safe keep in mind the train tracks were also wood so if they set a light they'd be absolutely screwed oh my god oh my god Flipping God. Look at that, guys. That is incredible. Guys, you can literally see how sweaty I am. I literally just made it before sunset. And this is like... I can't get over it. This is absolutely insane. Holy shit. Wow. Wow. Look at that, that's fucking crazy. I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty scary, but it's really, really cool. That is crazy. I wonder if you can swim in it. This is where I'm staying tonight. Literally, I'm in a cave. Like, it's actually huge. I'm not sure if it's showing on camera, but... See, I don't even know if I can get the drone up here. Guys, look at this. All sheltered. All right, so I guess this is where I gotta stick it through tonight. Woo! Oh, so I'm pretty annoyed. Basically, because I'm in the middle of the jungle, I can't actually get the drone up because it can't connect to any GPS or satellite. That's what I'm gonna do now is set up my sleeping bag. It's slowly, it's almost dark right now. I feel like it's gonna be a little bit scary in here, but it'll be fun at the same time. Once again, guys, no food, didn't catch a fish. I've got a little bit of water left, but that's about it. Um, it's currently it's currently eight o'clock, so yeah. Hopefully I'll get some shut eye by like 10 o'clock, 10 p.m., um, but yeah. As you've seen in the other challenges, I can't normally sleep on these 24 hour challenges because we're literally sleeping on like gravel or cement. So hopefully I can get a little bit, I feel like the, I feel like the waterfall is either gonna make me 
stay awake or put me to sleep, so I'm exhausted. Let's go. All right, guys, so of course I had to pick the sleeping bag that was broken. Oh my God. Literally, the zip does not work at all, which means it's gonna be not as warm. And it's only, I recognize right now, it's only a 15 degree sleeping bag, so. Oh my God, I'm so exhausted, but I literally don't know if I'm gonna be able to sleep with that in the background. I calculated before, I'm literally about seven kilometers from the car, like in the middle of the jungle, alone. And I have you guys to talk to. You're the only one I can talk to at the moment. Oh, I'm so annoyed about that drone. So, can't put up the drone and didn't catch any food today. I'm literally starving. Just had a sip of water, so I feel a little bit better, but yeah. Hopefully I can get some shut eye. All right, guys, so it's currently around 1 a.m. I feel like I got like literally five, 10 minutes sleep. Um, but yeah, I don't think I'm gonna get any sleep to be honest. Long night ahead. I don't even know what time sunrise is. Probably like 6.37. We got, oh. It's so bloody cold in this cave. So cold. So guys, it's currently 3.30. I'm literally over this. My back is so sore. Freezing. I think it's because I'm in a cave. It's making it a lot colder. Oh my God. Mm. Guys, I'm not gonna lie, I had like probably like 20, 25 minutes sleep, maybe 30. All right guys, that is a wrap. Sorry if I look like I haven't slept for like four days. Guys, if you did stay at the end, make sure you comment down below. Let me know you stayed till the end. Make sure you hit the like button, guys. The likes and comments really, really do mean a lot. Hey guys, I can't even talk. I'll see you in the next episode.